Hey kids, do you have a lot of free time and very little self-respect? You do? Well, it sounds like you're a perfect candidate for deep stone, deep sight weapon farming. Whoa! All right, let's put all our cards on the table here. You can jump into the Deepstone Crypt Raid right now in the year of our Lord 2023 and completing any encounter in that raid has a chance of dropping a deep sight version of that weapon. Very cool, because yay, the Deepstone Raid weapons are indeed craftable right now. Here's the bad news. The odds of you getting a deep sight are not good, like cowboy hat drop rate from the new dungeon level of not good. According to Chevy, the odds of you getting a deep sight to drop from the Deepstone Raid, about 5%. However, despite those low drop numbers, I still think deep sight crypt farming is worth your time. Today, I'll tell you why and how you can farm one particular encounter in the deep stone crypt lightning quick, even if you aren't a falling star titan main. But real quick question for you. Are you looking for a fun free to play game hotter than a Datto vault roast video? Underdog. <laughs> Unrelenting. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Well, good news, because today's video is sponsored by Rise of Kingdoms. In Rise of Kingdoms, you can experience the technology tree based on real world logic and choose the route you approve of to grow your team. What kind of technology collection is the strongest? Hey, that's your call, bro. Unlock elite soldiers. In Rise of Kingdoms, you can unlock the most powerful soldiers in history by researching their prerequisites. No matter if it's the British longbows or the Germany Teutonic Knights, you can experience their glory in its heydays and crashing your enemies with ease. And by the way, they've got 13 civilizations in there for you to enjoy, including Rome, Germany, Britain, France, the Vikings, China, Japan, Korea, and so on. Each civilization has its own commanders based on real historical figures, as well as a unique architectural style, special units, and civilization bonuses. Build your power and guard your lands like in the days of old. But we're in the future now, so you can beat on other people and have a good time doing it from the comfort of your own home. All in-game action takes place on a single enormous map inhabited by players and NPCs. No isolated bases or separate battle screens. Map features include natural obstructions such as rivers and mountain ranges and strategic passes that must be captured to gain entrance to neighboring regions. Not only can you enjoy this incredible game on PC, but with the cross playability, you can enjoy the game wherever you prefer to play. Head on down to the video description and use my link to download Rise of Kingdoms and receive a special bonus using code ROCKTECHPOW. Technology's power. Build your own kingdom in Rise of Kingdoms. All right, we back. So with those low ass drop rate numbers, is deep stone deep site weapon farming still worth it? I mean, that's up to you. But to me, yeah, it is with the right loadout. My team was getting each run done in about two and a half minutes, which if you think about it, pretty damn quick. And think about it this way. If you're trying to get the heritage shotgun, for example, and you only wanted to do it via guaranteed deep side drops, you need to beat the raid five times over a grand total span of five weeks, AKA one time per week, because you only get one guaranteed deep side drop per week. To me, five weeks is kind of a long time to wait for one crafted gun. So if you did today's farm, even if you got one or two deep side heritage shotguns to drop, you would be shaving off one or two weeks of your time not having the fully crafted gun. Besides, I would rather do a 2.5 minute farm back to back a few times than a full deep stone crypt run any day of the week. But you do you. Alrighty, what encounter are we farming? As if you couldn't already tell from the filler footage in the background. That would be the Atrax encounter. Why? Again, one, it is short, one done quickly, and two, the loot you get from the encounter is what I happen to want. Take a look at the following chart. Feel free to pick whatever encounter you want, but I've determined already that really the only two deep stone raid weapons I want to craft are both the shoddy and the sniper. And lucky me, they both drop from Atrax. Perfect. Okay, next thing to talk about are debuffs. They do not work on Atrax. At least that is what I have gathered from talking with other content creators and something well explained in the following video from YouTuber Marshix. Shout out to them. The TLDR is that if you plan on clapping Atrax's big robot booty, do not attempt to debuff her because it will not work. That means Ted Divinity, Tractor Cannon, and especially the godly new Weakened Clear are all out. Debuffs might not work, but regular buffs will. More on that later, but keep it in mind. Another thing to keep in mind, Deepstone Crypt is 1350 power level, a criminally easy farm that will likely require zero infusion or gear upgrading on your part. There are two exotic weapons I'ma recommend your fire team bring to the party, and with either, no infusion required, you are good with 1350. Those weapons are, by the way, the Parasite Grenade Launcher or the Grand and Overture Machine Gun. Either weapon can work, but before we talk about how to use them, why don't we talk about class? If you want to be really efficient with your farming, Falling Star Thunder Crash Titan is the play. Big shock. I really hate to say it because it's just so boring and typical.
typical, but yeah. If you have a Titan who has the Falling Star exotic, this is 100% the play paired together with the Parasite Grenade Launcher. We'll get into what to do if you don't have a Titan under your player umbrella, but yeah, about Four Falling Star Thundercrash Titans paired together with the Parasite Worm Launcher will insta-nuke Atrax all the way down to final stand in one go, and that is the goal. Remember to do Thundercrash and then Parasite, by the way, not the other way around. Trust me, we tried Parasite then Thundercrash, and it didn't really work out as well. The timing is kind of weird. Do Thundercrash first, again, because four Falling Star Thundercrashes and four Parasites are all you need to put Atrax in the final stand. You could do this farm with four Titans and two whatever the hell else you want. If your farming team doesn't have four titans, well, why don't we go down the depth chart? We tried a team of all warlocks and found that, yeah, that actually would work too. A little bit more annoying, but in that situation, your DPS strategy should become Radiant Well and the Grand Overture Machine Gun. Grand Overture is a weird machine gun that you can charge up to full power beforehand, and then when at full power, use it to damage Atrax from within your warlock well. Again, remember, debuffs don't work, but empowering buffs do. If you go the Grand Overture route to be sure that everyone's Overture is at max power before final stand time or you won't have enough damage output. You can also put on a Nova Bomb or two, but remember, fire Overture first and then Nova Bomb. And if you do Nova Bomb, go Vortex. Reason being, cataclysmic Nova Bombs can collide with each other and then you just f everything up. If you have no Titans and no Warlocks, which I'm sure would never be the case, but if it were, an all hunter team can work, but you need Blade Barrage, knock them down, and max power star eater scales. No one can really make a big mistake, but it is doable. All right, now that you have powerful options for each class in the game, just mix and match with what your fire team has. Again, the easiest method just being four Falling Star Thunder Crash Punch Bros. Okay, the strategy ain't too wild. Just do the encounter like normal from the beginning. Have three people go upstairs, three people stay downstairs. One thing to remember though for the upstairs team, save one servitor at low health until everyone is ready to go for damage. Reason being is that damage time begins when all six servitors are dead, the three from downstairs and the three from upstairs. If you're running a wacky team like six hunters, which again, please do not do, this is where you would buy yourself a little extra time time to make sure everybody is ready to deal damage. When the downstairs team has all three of their servitors dead, they should take the elevator upstairs, and when everyone is all together upstairs, finish off the final servitor and unleash the pain on Atrax with everything you have. Be sure to do a 3-2-1 countdown to make sure you're all beginning damage at the exact same time, and bring the hurt. When you've put Atrax into final stand mode, it should be the same thing. Find the correct one to damage, group up, do a 3-2-1 countdown, and bam, good to go. As long as somebody on your team has saved the encounter from earlier, just keep loading up the encounter on one character, then changing characters before running it back. You know the drill. Share today's video with a fire team near you and best of luck in your deep sight RNG. Do me a favor and click the like button if today's video helped you in any way and subscribe to my channel if you are new and I appreciate you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on stream. <laughs>